Have you ever been building something in React? You just need a simple RESTful API to get up and running to try something out. An hour later, you're still trying to find an API that works, that doesn't require an API key, and then you forgot what you were trying to build in the first place. Today, we're gonna to check out JSON server to get up and running quickly with a fake RESTful API, and we'll learn how to customize it a little bit. We're going to create a file called db.json where our fake data will live that's going to be served through this API. So we'll do a JSON object and we'll say we'll define some users. So we'll have an array of them and we'll give each user an ID. So we'll say this is one and a name. Name and this will just be Lee. So save that and why don't we just duplicate it to get two users here. Give this two and we'll say this is Bob, save that. And we're also going to create some repositories. So think like GitHub sort of thing. Repositories. And each one will again have an ID. One, it's gonna have a URL. So we'll point this to uh, GitHub. So github.com slash Lee Halliday slash hello. And we can relate this to one of our users up here. So we can say user ID one. So I'm just gonna hit save. Um, Prettier is gonna fix my JSON and then we'll duplicate this to have a second one. So we'll call this second and save it. So if we wanna serve this through a RESTful API now, all we need to go is into the console and I'm going to use NPX to avoid sort of having to install this globally. And I'm just going to say NPX JSON server, go and watch the file db.json. So that's going to install itself if it hasn't already. It now tells you what resources you have to work with. So we can go over here and go to localhost. Where is it running? 3000. And we can load this here. And again, it gives you a link to slash users. So here's an endpoint that serves up some users. If we want, we can go view one of those users. And now we have the cool thing is because we define those two types of data and relationships between them, we can actually say, let's go look at the repositories of user one and it loads it up here. So another cool way we can work with this is if we're viewing repositories and we wanna see the user that's sort of related to each repository, um, the user that belongs to each one, what we can do is we can just say expand user. So this will attach the user data to each of those repositories. Another way to look at it is if we're looking at users and what we wanna do is embed the data of each of the user's repositories. So it's, if the other one was belongs to, this is the has many relationship. So I've already typed this out in the past. I'm just gonna click on it. So here's the repositories for each user. Okay, that's good, but what if we wanted to go and maybe like post, create some new data, update some existing data. I'm gonna get out of the browser and instead go over to Insomnia, which is a, sort of a RESTful API tool that I like to use locally. So right here I have it just on the wrong port. Here's me fetching the list of users. So I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna say create a user. So I'm gonna change this to a post to the same endpoint slash users. And for the body, I'm gonna change this to JSON and I'm gonna create a user that's named uh, demo, just like that. So we'll send it, we get the response back user three. So if I go back to the list of users, I now have three of them. And the cool thing is, is that if you go and look at this db.json, it actually updates your JSON file and it adds in this new user. So we can now, let's duplicate this again and we'll say update user update user. So we're gonna change this to a put and we'll say update user three, the one we just created and we'll change its name to change. So update this, it's still ID three, its name is now change and if we go and look here, it's updated our file. So this is pretty good for like a standard, you just need a RESTful API to work with to test out your front end code. Maybe the back end developers aren't yet ready so you can just sort of fake this out in the meantime. Or if you're trying to learn like how to use the library SWR, 
or a React query and you just need that endpoint to work with. But what if you want to customize it? Like let's say you want to um, build in like needing an authorization token or something like that or handling errors in a certain way. We can actually build our custom, our own custom server and tweak it as much as we want. So I'm going to stop this server and instead I'm going to go create a file called uh, server.js. But before I do that, I'm just going to yarn in it this and we'll call it the JSON server demo. Spelled it wrong, doesn't matter. Go with all the defaults. And we're going to add as a dev dependency JSON server. So that's going to install. Cool. So now we have a package.json and we're bringing in JSON server as a dev dependency. Let me fix my spelling there. Beautiful. So with this up and running, I'm going to go to server and I'm going to set up what really looks like a simple express app because I've I haven't looked, but I feel like underneath um, JSON server is basically just using Express. So what we're going to do is we're going to say JSON server require JSON server. And the first few lines, if you look at their package on the website um, over here, you're going to basically see the code that I'm about to write. So somewhere down here, I'm just going to be writing this. Um, so I could even just copy and paste it, but I guess what's the fun in that? So once we have this package imported, we'll create a copy of the server itself. So JSON server dot create. And when we have the server, we're going to grab the router. So this is basically which file it points to, to know what routes to create. So we're going to point it at this JS this db.json file. So we're going to say json server.router, point it to db.json. And we also need to get the middlewares, sort of the default middlewares. Middlewares basically can inspect a request and decide, do I want to like allow it to keep on going through my middleware stack or do I want to tweak the response in some way? So we're actually going to be working and creating our own middleware to basically require that it passes a certain bearer authorization token. And if it doesn't, we'll just respond with an error. So we'll see how to do that in a second, but let's get the defaults right here. Um, defaults. Cool. So once we have this set up, we can tell the server to use the middlewares. And then we can tell the server to use the router which also must be sort of its own middleware. And then we're going to tell it to listen on port 3000. And when it's done connecting, we can just say um, running on HTTP localhost port 3000. So just like that. So if everything worked, and again, you could have just copied and pasted this, we can have it up and running. So I'm going to use nodemon so that every time I change the file, I don't have to reboot it. And we're just going to point this at server.json or .js, sorry. So it's listening on 3000. Come here. You can see it's the exact same thing we were looking at before. It's got my three users. And what I want to do is basically I want to put in a requirement that anytime there's a request to slash users, I'm going to require there to be an authorization token that has bearer ABCD. So what we're going to do is sort of between um, the router and the middleware, we are going to set up our own middleware that will receive the request response and the next sort of telling it to go on to the next middleware in the stack. And what we're going to do is we're going to look and we're going to first see, is it a request to slash users? So we'll say if the request path starts with slash users and the request headers, the specifically the authorization one, if it's not equal to bearer ABCD, we're going to just respond with a 401 response unauthorized. So we're going to say return a response status of 401, JSON response of an error that says um, must pass 
bearer token A, B, C, D. So if this isn't true, what we want to do is just tell it to keep on going, which will basically have it pass to the, the default router from JSON server so that it can process the re their request normally. Now there's one thing you're going to need to add in here if you want to support um, put and post requests, uh, basically being able to access uh, the JSON that was passed up. And we just need to add a body parser. So use, and we'll say JSON server dot body parser here. So because I'm using NodeMon, it's already restarted. We can go over to Insomnia. We'll go to the list of users and we should see an error here, must pass bearer token ABCD. So if we look at repositories, this one should work because we didn't check for that one, but users is requiring that auth. So now this allows us to basically, if we're building an app and we wanna play around with like working with authenticated, unauthenticated, this allows us to do that. So here we can just in Insomnia, go to auth bearer token, and we will pass up A, B, C, D, and now it should work. Cool, that's all I wanted to cover today. JSON server, really up, easy to get up and running uh, with a fake RESTful API, but it's really powerful because you can go and build your own server and add in any sort of logic that you want, um, your front end or whatever is using this fake RESTful API to be able to handle properly. All right, take care, bye.